Welcome to the Comic Sauce Podcast, where we talk comics and comics culture. I am Henry Liu, and today I am joined by Porfirio Rangel. Porfirio, how's it going? It's going good, Henry. Happy to be here. Excellent. I'm also joined by Christian Diadamo. Christian, how goes? It's going well, Henry. It's been raining like all day, so I'm nice and cozy. Excellent. Yeah, it is uh, a bit cold and wet in the Bay Area right now. But are you guys, uh, you guys you know, are getting rain in the Bay Area? Yeah, we got, we got a lot of rain. Lots of rain. Today. rain. Yeah, hours oh, of rain. Did you get any? A, no, I didn't get any down here. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wish we can give you some. <laughs> Yeah, today is December 1st, 2022. We are the Comic Sauce Podcast. Find us at Comic Sauce Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Okay, so we're going to talk about Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. So this, yeah, this movie has been out for a few weeks now. So we've had time to process, and uh, we're going to get into it today. And um, yeah, this is definitely noteworthy, newsworthy, because uh, this movie has uh, made a lot of money at the box office, has done well with the critics, and uh, a lot of people are talking about this movie. So... Now it's our turn. We're going to talk about it. Uh, Before we get into spoilery stuff, though, uh, let's do some non-spoilery stuff. What were our thoughts about this movie before we saw the movie? What were our expectations? Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, You want to start, Perferio? What were your expectations going into this movie? Okay, so, you know, like, Let's just start off by having the conversation about like Chadwick Boseman's death, you know, yeah, to the movie yeah. and, how, and how much that was going to impact the movie. I think like when that happened, you know, the, us as fans were just, of course, like devastated and in grief over losing not just like a phenomenal character on screen, T'Challa, but just a wonderful actor. And I think, like, you know, all of us were just wondering, like, what does that mean for the future of the franchise, you know? Yeah. And that's been kind of like, you know, just a lingering question, I feel like, behind every fan's mind going into the film. Like, are they going to recast T'Challa? Are they going to CGI him? Who's going to be the Black Panther, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel like, yeah, like, honestly, I don't think any of those questions were answered until, what, San Diego dropped the trailer? Were they they the first San Diego Comic-Con? Was that the first time the Wakanda trailer dropped? I believe you're right. And I would argue even then, these these questions weren't answered, right? There was still a lot of mystery about it what exactly this movie was yeah yeah for sure and so like let me i'll start right there at that trailer just because in one single day i became like (laughs) the biggest um namor fan just because of the whole um change up of his backstory of going from like you know like namor how we know in the comics to having him have like a mesoamerican indigenous background um played by um tecohueta or techohueta and i instantly loved the choice and i loved the costume and i was so for it and so instantly like i i think we even did like you know we did our like what we're looking forward to podcast episode wakanda forever was not on my list but Mm -hmm. instantly after i watched that trailer i was like this is the movie (laughs) i am most excited for like i was i had like goosebumps i was more excited than the scarlet witch movie than 
Thor Love and Thunder than um, any of the Disney Plus shows. Like, I was like, this is so awesome. Um, so, yeah, let, I'll toss it off to Christian. But, yeah, I was just, after that trailer dropped, like, my excitement level just went through the roof. And I was just excited to see what they were going to do to honor Chadwick and um, what they were going to do with the character. Right on. Yeah, that is a sign of a good trailer. <laughs> that makes you want to see a movie that badly. <laughs> that's, a, that's definitely a sign of a good trailer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, how about you, Christian? What were your expectations? Yeah. Um, like, uh, it's, it's hard to really pin down, I think, a particular, like, expectation hype for me. It felt like kind of all over the place, like, or, like, Chadwick died in late 2020 it was like incredibly sad and like felt everywhere like and it was so so surprising so shocking he he left us too young and too early and like coming in you know going into the movie when the trailer dropped there there was a lot of like i was like kind of worried like how is like how are they going to pull this off without black panther black panther without black panther i was like uh like i was kind of worried but also kind of excited i think ryan cooler is a great director who's made great work in the past um even outside of black panther with uh fruitvale station and creed i was like yeah. like i've been a, i've been a fan of his so i did i did trust him and i think the trailer did bring i think a lot of awe to it um like they put a lot of, it seems like they also put a lot more focus like in the trailer we'll get into more of the movie on queen ramonda and she seemed to have like a big focus of it and i was i was interested to see like what they do we never really um saw who the black panther was in the trailer even though like eh, eventually it was pretty easy to piece together after a little while but there was a lot of intrigue going into this movie and like a lot of like, Oh man, please be good. I really want this movie to hit. I want this movie to be like as good, if not better than the first movie in order to like, you know, cause you want to, you want it to honor his memory and his legacy, you know? And so like I was hyped, but also very worried depending on the given day. Yeah, go, going off what Christian said, like, I think, you know, like, when the second trailer dropped with it re being revealed that the Black Panther was going to be um, female, but done by a female character, I think everybody automatically assumed it was going to be Shuri, even though it wasn't confirmed. Yeah. But then there was just other suggestions like, oh, what if it was Angela Bassett or Nakia or Okoye? And, um, I think there was just a lot of like, kind of like naysayers and backlash if it was going to be Shuri, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, no, Shuri hadn't really been a major, had had a major role within the MCU prior to this film. And also like the actress herself got major backlash back in early 2021 because of her anti-vax comments um so there was definitely like a lot of like what's gonna happen with this film and the trailers just did a good job of like hyping everything up without giving anything away yeah that's a good point that affected me like going in i didn't have a whole lot of expectation because I wasn't given a whole lot, you know? I really didn't know what to expect with this movie. And it was kind of a cool feeling <clears throat> just not knowing what I was in for. Usually I have like a pretty good idea of the movie I'm gonna see, but with this movie, it really wasn't the case. I didn't know what was coming. And um, <clears throat> I like what you said too, Christian, about how are they gonna pull this off? Like that was a big curiosity. How are they gonna make a Black Panther movie without 
the Black Panther, you know? Uh, so very curious. That, that was the main thing with me, curiosity. That was the name of the game with me going into this one. Okay, so let's give the spoiler alert now. We'll get into the movie itself. And um, yeah, so uh, plot points, etc., are fair game. Uh, let's start with what we liked about this movie. What did you like about Wakanda Forever? There is, <clears throat> there's a lot in this movie. It's pretty long. Clocks in at uh, two hours and 41 minutes. And there are, are a lot of characters and just a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's pick it apart a bit. What was good? Uh, you want to start here, Christian? What did you like about this movie? Yeah, I, I think continuing off uh, what we've been talking about with um, Chadwick with Boseman passing and like, how are they gonna do? How are gonna? How are they gonna make this movie without him? And I actually really like the way they worked in the death of um, the Black Panther, Chadwick, and King T'Challa into the plot of the movie, and how a lot of the movie kind of revolved around grieving over his over his death. Like, I think of all the avenues they could have gotten. They could have gone recasting CGI things like that. I feel like this was the best way to go with with um, that that kind of untimely event. It, and I think you get a lot of very impassioned speeches from the characters, from the different family members, and moments of a lot of like where they show like a lot of vulnerability over this event because you feel like it. It feels a bit like the actors are saying it, but all, but not in a bad way, in a way that it feels natural to the characters, and it feels like it, it, very cathartic in a way. I think any scene that is honoring Chadwick, um, the scene at the very, you know, the very beginning, when Shuri's trying to save his life, and it's like very very tense, and then the the funeral scene, and um, very various different moments after like are all done like super well and i think like the like the big highlights of the movie yeah definitely. yeah def definitely agree like i feel like you know like right off the bat i think the film opens up with um kind of like with, with the the question in everybody's mind like what's going to happen to the character and that's like the first thing that gets addressed which is like yeah. that um t'challa is um he's dying basically you know and sure he's like trying to like find a way to recreate the purple heart to the purple herb to um give to him and um then yeah it just you know it opens up with I guess like you know like memory and tribute to Chadwick like and um, but also like I feel like it gives like a little bit of like a griefing process for fans to just kind of like like take a breath and just like be like here like we're making this film for Chadwick um let's honor him let's do this first and then we'll get to the film you know yeah yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree with you guys. I think the way this movie handled Chadwick Boseman's death was, uh, you know, it was handled really well. And um, <laughs> just thinking back, it, it's like, it really was an impossible task by Ryan Coogler. <laughs> I mean, you have to honor Chadwick's legacy but and be you know appropriate and sensitive about it but also you have to make a good movie and tell the story you want to tell and and make the story work and it's it's so difficult because you know um you know a, a problem with uh, with movies sometimes is a, is a major character death you you want to see the character you, to have a major character die off screen is like Oh man, like it's it's kind of a no-no, right? Because 
you know a major character you you, you you're supposed to see them die you to feel the impact but here it would be completely inappropriate to show him in any way during his death right mm -hmm. and also like to have uh t'challa die from like essentially an unknown illness they never name it they never mm -hmm. explain it and again you know good storytelling it, it you tend to know like what, what's going on right you can't just kind of write it off as oh you, we don't know what it was it's just we're not going to tell you and uh it's kind of it leaves the audience in kind of like confusion a bit but here it it it, it makes sense. It's the right move because to 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 actually go into the details of the illness just I don't know would it would feel weird I think. So Kugler like really he really uh, uh, did an incredible like balancing act, balancing those two things: the, the sensitivity of of the real life actor's death and telling the story the right way. So yeah, just kudos. To, to Kugler for that. I, I think all that was handled really well. And, um, and he actually used it. I think he, he used the, the emotional weight of Chadwick Boseman's death to add to the emotional weight of the movie. And um, yeah, throughout the movie, it was just, oh, it was, it was very touching all throughout, all throughout. There, there are a few specific instances we can call out later, but um, all throughout there was, um yeah yeah a lot of emotional highlights i would say okay um so maybe i mean we just we we're kind of talking about it right so let's go into another big part of this movie the new black panther you know uh we didn't know a whole lot going in like i was saying but the second trailer of this movie did reveal a new Black Panther, a female Black Panther, which I think you were saying, Perfirio, all signs pointed to Shuri, right? Mm -hmm. um, Shuri does take over the Black Panther mantle in the comics. Uh, Letitia Wright is front and center in the movie poster. And yeah, in this trailer, it does appear to be Shuri as the new Black Panther. Uh, so yeah, all signs were kind of pointing to Shuri. Um, I was curious because I knew so little about this movie. I was wondering if all that was sort of like um, a misdirect and they were going to like <laughs> pull the rug from under us. Um, so again, you know, we, we gave the spoiler alert, but uh, key plot point here, it was indeed Shirley. Uh, Shuri, Shuri. <laughs> not Shirley, Shuri, <laughs> uh, as uh, the new Black Panther, right? Um, so, what did we all think about this? You know, was it a surprise in any way? I'm guessing not, but uh, was it a surprise? What were your feelings about uh, Shuri taking over the mantle here? How about you, Preferio? What did you think? Yeah, so for me, I, you know, I think we we all said it, like, none of us were surprised that it was Shuri. I think it just, storyline, it made the best sense. Um, but I was, yeah, I was, I, I didn't enjoy <laughs> the choice. I wasn't the biggest fan of um, Shuri being picked to be the Black Panther. I really kind of wanted it to be Nakia. And um, I just didn't think it made sense to have Shuri do it. Like, I know in the comics, she Shuri has picked up the Black Panther title before. But just right now in the MCU, it just didn't make sense. Like, she's always been, like, the support, the side character, the tech person you know she's never i at least to the best of my knowledge she has like no um fighting background um no combat background and like and then yeah she's like thrown in missions with okoye 
and um you know she's just i think we'll go back more into this later but you know she's just a child with so much anger and hate and um and she's still processing grief you know and yeah i just i would let me just say like to kind of i guess like summarize everything i said like i was just not sold as shuri as the black Mm -hmm. panther got it how about you christian um i think i liked her a little more uh as black panther i like i i really liked her arc in this i thought um it's i guess more credit to ryan coogler like because a lot of times uh people write like characters they might write certain characters as side characters certain characters as main characters Mm -hmm. um and so in in order to move a side character into that main character position is probably really really tough imagine it was a tough time not every character can really transition into that main character role um especially in uh, like many marvel movies i don't know if uh like we could watch a movie about ned from spider-man you know <laughs> but uh i think uh sure was i thought Shuri's uh character like push into the forefront was actually done pretty well i think um it's a way to express like a lot of the grieving for the death of chadwick boseman she tr- and i think her being the more techie type character she's very logical not very traditional and you know we see her try to save uh t'challa but it fails and that's like a big failure that she like internalizes Mm -hmm. yeah and that makes she's really young and so that that of course makes her really angry and like i think the movie does well into like incorporate a lot of that grief and anger into like her arc and how she approaches Namor and Talukan throughout like the movie and different parts of the movie. And like, uh, like how does she get the black, Pan- like how, how she becomes black Panther. I will say like, uh, as, as I guess a little aside, I do think that happens a little too late in the movie. Um, but we'll, we can get into that later. Cause it's more of a negative, but back to the positive. Um, I did like her arc as a main character. Um, would I see Shuri as Black Panther going forward? Black Panther 3, Next Avengers, several cameos. Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I'm sold in that regard as far as the franchise moving forward. But I will say for this movie, I, I actually liked the change. And I, I actually liked her in the in the role. Although having Nakia or say like a Koye or something, I, you know, I th- that might have been a little better as far as like the combat prowess of the the superhero, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. The I suppose more obvious choice would be a Koye or Nakia because they have done fight scenes previously and Shuri has always been the guy in the chair kind of person, right? Literally in the first Black Panther movie, it's T'Challa, Nakia, and Okoye who go to Korea and they have this huge fight scene against Claw and his henchmen. And it's Shuri who's back home in Wakanda, you know, at the console, right? Uh, So... Yeah, logically, it would make more sense for one of those two characters. Um, But kind of like what you're alluding to, Christian, if you're going to have a story of Shuri becoming the new Black Panther, I think this is this is the way to do it. Right. I think Coogler did a good job in rolling this out. It was the reluctant new Black Panther. Shuri is not a fighter. She doesn't even want to be the new Black Panther. She kind of even doesn't even believe in Black Panthers, right? She's very like non-traditional and she's like, well, why don't we even have to continue this tradition, right? Um, so when, when things start to change, 
um, it becomes pretty powerful when she actually takes the mantle. Oh, I would also add that uh, I think maybe it was you, Prefiro, who, who was saying she's got this anger in her, right? She shouldn't be a superhero because she's very vengeful, right? Um, and she's young, she's a kid. Um, th there are all kinds of reasons why she shouldn't be the new Black Panther. And I think Kugler does a good job in telling the story of, of that, of that person, the reluctant hero, right? Um, time and again, uh, great superhero characters are characters that don't necessarily want to be superheroes, like someone like Spider-Man, right? Um, they're, they're put into that position through extraordinary circumstances. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, they might prefer to be sitting at home, you know, mm -hmm. not out there fighting bad guys, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, let's definitely get into that a bit more. Um, yeah, let's stick with the, the positives for now. Um, I definitely have some strong thoughts about, um, I guess, who I thought maybe would have been a better Black Panther. <laughs> uh, but let's stay positive for the moment. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about the cast a lot, you know, the void of Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman, Letitia Wright taking over uh, as a new Black Panther. What about the rest of the cast? This is a big cast. There are a lot of actors in this movie. Personally, I thought overall the acting was really good. I thought the cast did a mm -hmm. great job mm -hmm. overall. Um, it sounds like we're all in agreement. Are any notable standouts here? Name Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I said earlier, like, um, Techo Huerta, like he just killed it. He killed his role. And, you know, like I also said earlier, like Neymar in the comics, he's known as, is he the first mutant? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, retroactively i suppose we could say that <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean like he's definitely like the one like the first anti-heroes within marvel comics you know you had the human torch you had neymar you had the fantastic four that's like way 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 back in the day you know yeah. during um and so yeah to see him come onto the screen was you know <laughs> yeah like Prior to the trailer, I really wouldn't have cared for Neymar, but just like the changing up of his background being from having this like Mesoamerican um, background and just the way the the city is built and the people and the language and just their philosophy of life. I was just like, like struck you know, like, I was like, this is so fucking awesome, and just, like, seeing another brown person right there, um, it just, I don't know, kind of show, like, why, like, representation matters, and I was blown away with the beauty that Ryan Coogler made from this character, and, um, yeah, the storyline was his story alone was just really, really great. Excellent. Yeah, I think it needs to be said that Namor in this movie was a big moment for Latinx representation in superhero movies. I mean, it's been it's been a big void for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a big moment for that. And uh, yeah, I do agree. Namor was a worthy addition to the MCU. And it is pretty cool that uh, you were alluding to this, uh, Perfurio. Uh, this is a really old character. This, this character, Prince Namor, the Submariner, debuted in Marvel Comics in 1939, a long time ago, a golden age superhero. Um, and uh, not to get off Namor entirely, but uh, there was another uh, MCU addition in this movie, Riri Williams, and uh, her character is very new to Marvel. She was created in Marvel Comics in 
2016. Uh, so that alone is super cool. Like there's a super old Marvel character and a super new Marvel character, both making their MCU debut. And I enjoy both characters a lot in this movie. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the, the take on Namor, even though he's a really old comic character, completely reimagined, fresh take. Um, they, they changed this up a lot. You know, um, uh, his home is t technically uh, not named Atlantis, but it, it's it's still Atlantis, but it's it's not any Atlantis that we're familiar with in the comics or anywhere really. Uh, it's a whole it's a whole new ball game here. Uh, so yeah, a really fresh take on Namor and his homeland. Um, uh, how about you, Christian? What what are your thoughts on uh, on Namor? Oh, I also really like Namor, the boy without love. Yes, I did think it was a a really fresh take. Um, I like that. Um, I like I thought the character looked great, and like Talo Khan was really cool. I think it's a really cool sequence when um sure he's in the in the suit and the two are kind of just traveling through talo Khan, and you get, kind of get to see the world and see see its people just kind of live out their lives like talo Khan feels very real very lived in and like i think it's like very well thought out um and it, it does feel like a very fresh take on the character i think um with like another uh you know with aquaman also out uh, a few years you know a few years ago and of course with Zack snyder i think like going the more traditional route with atlantis uh would have made it just feel way too similar so i think having you know changing the name of atlantis to talcon and kind of moving it to the other you know to the other side of the atlantic ocean was a, a really good move and like um i well, what's another thing i think i really liked from namor i think yeah. i thought i yeah i was just gonna really like piggyback off what you said christian because i was having this conversation with another person that like you know jason mama he also is like you know another person with like pacific islander like Polynesian indigenous roots, you know. So I don't know if like this is just a theme or something, like whether or not like or like conscious decision, but like most like folks who are like casted for like water superhero roles seem to have like this like indigenous like background to it. Like not hmm. that many white folks anymore are getting casted for these like Aquaman like uh superpowers except, except the, the deep, deep but nobody likes <laughs> nobody likes the deep yeah, he's the villain. <laughs> not he's even the in villain. universe anyone likes the deep <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but, but yeah i'm glad you pointed that out because yeah i started to notice i was like mm, i wonder if there's like like i don't know if there's like some kind of like yeah connection like between like you know indigenous culture and like water you know could be. I th I think they used uh like the way they used indigenous culture really well. I did. I, I enjoyed this like flashback scene where he kind of goes through his history, mm. and how he when he rises back above the water, he kind of uh like he's you know he sees like a, like people kind of capturing people for like slavery, and then he like kills you know he kills them and burns them down, and that's how he gets his name. And. Like down, I thought that was really great. Down with I, the colonizers. Yeah. Right. And like you really get to see like who he is. Like I think, um, for Marvel villains, he definitely is, is is like one of the better ones. And he's really a character I hope to see more of in the future. You know, mm -hmm. whether he's a hero or a villain, we'll see. But that that's the great thing about about Namor is that he can kind of fill a lot of different roles in that section in that field. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point um, about Namor being a great villain. I do agree. He was a great villain. 
And um, I think like the Killmonger character in the first Black Panther, uh, Ryan Coogler did a great job fleshing this character out. He gave Namor a lot of screen time. He gave him a lot of backstory. You really get a sense of who this guy is, why he does what he does. And while on one hand, he's villainous, on the other hand, you know, you, you kind of understand why he does these things. And um, there are certain points of time where you're kind of like, I'm kind of on Team Namor right now, you know? <laughs> and and you, re you really understand his motivations, right? Um, oh, hey, speaking of which, um, I know that when we all went to see the new Doctor Strange movie, for you, Perfirio, it was... A Scarlet Witch movie more than a Doctor Strange movie. I'm curious for this one, were you in that same uh, camp where you're like, oh, this is to you like a Namor movie with a back a Black Panther like, <laughs> background to it? Um, yeah, I guess I would agree to that point. Like, I know, like, you know, like similar to Scarlet Witch, I wouldn't consider Scarlet Witch or Neymar to be like the villains of these films, as opposed to like using words like anti-hero. Um, but like, yeah, for this movie, I just saw like, you know, you under like what you said, Henry. Like, I understand where Neymar is coming from. That anger, the that he's just doing this for protection for his people similar to I guess like Michael B. Jordan Killmonger in the first Black Panther film and um, I guess the only way I'm I'm saying this is because you know just as a fellow Latinx folk like I just related to Neymar on that level and I just mm. appreciated that representation and so <laughs> it's kind of like you know like similar again to like Scarlet Witch like I'm on your side like no matter what <laughs> <laughs> right on okay so we're all kind of in agreement that this is a a fresh new take on the Namor character and um, yeah a lot of kind of unexpected aspects came out now was it a little too fresh now in my mind this character, this movie character, was vastly different from the comics, Namor, right? Um, we talk about this a lot on the podcast, how faithful a movie is to its source material. Um, was the Submariner in this movie not faithful enough to the comics? Any thoughts on that? How did you feel about, you know, the differences in the character? Well, besides the race change, I think Neymar was very on par to how he's portrayed in the comics, you know, he, like, he could easily just, like, yeah, like, submerge Wakanda if you wanted to, you know, and he's kind of the person, I feel like Neymar's, like, he, he definitely hates, you know, like, um, what surface dwellers is that the word yeah, he uses? Yes, he uses. Yes, yeah, su surface dwellers. He hates them, um, and he just wants to be left alone. You know, like he wants like protection for his people and just like complete isolation. So, like, even though like Neymar's backstory has changed, I feel like the core of the Neymar character is still being portrayed within this film. Yeah. Uh Christian, you have some thoughts? Yeah. Um I'm not okay, so I'm uh, I'm not sure how hot of a uh, quote unquote take this is, but uh I, I I've never really liked Namor in the comics. Like <laughs> like uh like yeah, like he's kind of cool like kind of anti hero in, in Atlantis. Um but I always thought he looked super goofy. Uh I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> like the the speedo like the the ears like the i was never that in i yeah the wing the wings on his his ankles <laughs> i was really never that into him growing up or even as an adult i liked him here and there 
you know, like it's not, I'm not going to say I have some like vendetta character, but he just never appealed to me, honestly. And so like, I think one thing I think they updated really, really well was the costume. I think that there's like a, that like necklace thing that he wears. I'm not, I'm not sure what that's called. Um, he's got the big earrings and he still, but he still kind of keeps some of those like more comic-y elements, the pointed ears, the, the wings. And so like, I, I, and I was like, okay, like he looks way cooler here than I feel like I've ever seen him before. <laughs> like I, I, I was really happy with the way they updated Namor. I'm glad that they kind of gave him, you know, for, like they made him more Mesoamerican. They really gave Talokan like a very unique atmosphere and feel while his co like while his costume got vastly updated and um like he was played super well with like and so uh like I, I was uh I, I really really liked him here a lot more than I that I thought I would, you know. I'll say that. Excellent. Yeah, I'm pretty much with you guys. You know, even though there are a lot of differences from the comics, I think it was adapted really well. And that's what you got to do with a movie. You adapt. It's an adaptation, right? You can't have everything be 100% comics accurate, right? You adapt the character. And I think uh, they adapted it the right way. They changed things where they needed to, and they kept things the same where they could um look like you're saying perferio the the overall look of the character was 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 captured you know he had the wings on his ankle he had the green uh swimming outfit <laughs> and he had the ears you know like the, the the main look was there um and where they needed to change some things they did and i didn't have any major problems with what they changed and you know what what they kept that I think was really key. The fact that Namor is a complete badass motherfucker, you know, like <laughs> in the comics, you can't fuck with this guy. He, he fights all of the fantastic four. He fights all of the Avengers. Right. And um, kind of what you're saying, Christian, he looks goofy. It, it, it was always frustrating to me. Like this goofy dude is like, beaten down like the fantastic four all by himself <laughs> he's holding his own against like the hulk and the rest of the avengers like this goofy motherfucker like this guy and it was almost frustrating um but uh yeah like there's a great scene in this movie when uh he and his troops from talakan uh, attack wakanda and you see him at like uh, in all of his glory right and he is just like unstoppable and i was like damn this is this is namer from the comics he, he he's really like invincible like that um so uh where they needed to they adapted but you know i think they captured the character really well in this movie mm -hmm. all right so um uh, just a, a a few quick shout outs um, some other notable cast performances. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia was fantastic in this movie. Um, I, I definitely want to talk more about her. Uh, but in addition to her, uh, Angela Bassett really hit a home run in this movie. Um, Give the, her Oscar for this. Oh my God. Yeah. She was so good. Um, like, yeah, an, an actress of her caliber. Um, I kind of almost felt like she didn't have enough screen time in the first mm -hmm. Black Panther. Um, you know, you, you can't give everyone like a lot of screen time. But yeah, I kind of felt like, oh man, kind of want to see more of her. And you did see a lot more of her in this one. And she has an incredible presence in this movie. And just the way she de delivers her dialogue is just powerful. Uh, she's she's great um yeah the newcomer uh dominic thorne as riri williams i thought she was really great um yeah kind of a, a welcome change uh to 
uh, our core group, right? The, 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 the Wakandans, we get to see an African-American character and she's really funny in this movie. And um, yeah, uh, definitely makes me want to see the Ironheart TV show that's upcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely can't wait for that. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was, it was cool to see such a different character from uh, the, the Wakandans in this movie. Um, she could easily be just sort of like a Shuri clone because let's be honest, she's like uh, a black girl tech genius, right? Shuri and Riri are very similar in that regard. Um, but in this movie, uh, you, you see the differences. And um, because of that commonality, we see those two characters, Shuri and Riri, really bond. And that was really cool to see, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get into Nakia a bit here. Um, and this will be a nice little segue from like, in my mind, at least the, the positives to the negatives, because like I'm saying, uh, Lupita Nyong'o is so great in this movie and she doesn't show up till like pretty far along. Like you don't see her for a long time. I'm telling you when she shows up on screen, I, it was like, wow, like this is what I've been missing. You know, it was, it was honestly kind of like a build up to her yeah. appearance. You know, yeah. like, like, uh, Angela Bessa shows up at a school Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody's like, oh, I know where you're going. Mm -hmm. I know where you're going. And then when they actually show her, it's just like, oh, finally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's got this great new hairstyle. She looks uh -huh. great. And it's just like this, this like shining light appears. And um, man. Okay. So let's just cut to the chase here. I 100% think she should have been the new black panther um ditto like yeah. look like there's there's been a history of of what she's done and she's she's done combat scenes she's fight trained um so the character is sort of it, it makes sense for her to to take on the mantle from that perspective but i'm talking also just from like a, a casting perspective, you know, uh, look, this is a major motion picture. This is a big time Hollywood movie, right? And for a big time Hollywood movie, I think you need to have a movie star starring in your movie, right? And I love Letitia Wright. She's great as Shuri, the tech genius sidekick. <laughs> emphasis on sidekick uh, but i she just doesn't work as a movie star you know this is a big budget hollywood movie and i mean maybe this is kind of an old school way of thinking but i just really feel that a movie like this with the weight of it with the budget behind it behind it the epicness of it you need to have a movie star to lead the way Chadwick Boseman 100% was that person for Black Panther 1. Black Panther 2, it was missing. There was a void. There, there wasn't a movie star leading the way. Now, it's, it, I, I thought it, like I was struggling with this because I was like, man, I'm mean, just thinking in, in too antiquated a way. Um, maybe I should just kind of go with it. So I tried to just go with it and, you know, like I've been saying, I think Ryan Coogler and Letitia Wright did the best job they could do. But the fact that Lupita Nyong'o was in this movie and was so good in this movie and just had the look of a movie star and had the look of a leading character, that, that took away from it, right? Because if it's like, well, if there's no other choice, then we're just going to go with Shuri and just let's just ride this out. But literally a better option is standing right next to her, you know? So like, I can't help but think, damn, like, why couldn't they, why couldn't they have made that movie, All right? Um, we'll get into the final analysis later. And, but yeah, I'll say it right off that I did enjoy this movie, um, but I'm thinking it could have been so much better if it was Nakia. 
there's a shot of Lupita on the beach and the sun's on her and like dude I was I was like it took my breath away I'm like my god that is a movie star that's the person that's the person who should be leading this movie so 100 percent um I think Nakia should have been the new Black Panther instead of Shuri uh what are your guys' thoughts on this yeah I, I definitely see where you're coming from like um and I think like you know she uh, I guess we've already given the spoiler warning you know like of course she was she was raising King T'Challa's son T'Challa uh in Haiti and that's why she was kind of fairly absent from the plot especially at the beginning of the movie um but of course she she would be the queen of Wakanda T'Challa was the king and Nakia is the queen. So it is so I think that it actually really makes sense from a story perspective of why of like how she would take the mantle and why she would take the mantle, you know, to honor her late husband and and to rise and to rise as the the queen of Wakanda. So like and so I see where it's there. And she does have like like the really cool stealth action sequence where she like sneaks in, and I thought that was really cool. I like I do agree I think she would have made a better Black Panther and like it would have really helped the action as much as I did like um Shuri's arc as kind of the one dealing with the grief for it um I want I wonder like I I think that was a great way to I think or Shuri's arc was a great way to kind of really really show the grief and that's probably I think where Ryan Coogler had the idea you know, because I imagine it was really hard to figure out, like, okay, who's going to be the main character and how am I going to do the arc? These are all, you know, yeah. with how, who, and that probably was the best idea and, like, the, maybe the first idea he came up with. But I think, it, like, I could really, like, see Nakia as the Black Panther with the Avengers, you know, like, fighting alongside them and having, like, a really cool action sequence, you know? So go. I do think she was underserved in the movie. It would have been great if the, she was there more, you know? Yeah, I, echoing what both of you guys said, like, I think Nakia, like, she was one, yeah, the most logical sense or the fan favorite to be the Black Panther. Um, I just, the only, I guess, like, reasoning I could I I can't understand like why she wasn't the Black Panther. It's just because, um, you know, like just comparing to her, uh, beliefs like in the first Black Panther film, like she doesn't want to be like in like constrained by like the responsibility of having to, uh, watch over you know, Wakanda or anything. She kind of just wants to go rogue and um, help out, like, not just Wakanda, but outside the borders, the people outside the borders, you know? And I feel like anyone who's the Black Panther would just, you know, like the person, the protector of the country. And so just on that, like, character analysis, I think... That's probably the biggest reason I feel like why um, Ryan didn't choose her to be the Black Panther. Good points for sure on both of your guys' end. Um, counterpoint, though, like I think the reasons why she wouldn't be a good Black Panther are kind of the same reasons why Shuri ultimately was a decent choice because she's kind of. Uh, like a reluctant Black Panther, right? She she would rather not be be doing superhero stuff, right? That's why it it, it ultimately it be it makes for a better superhero, the reluctant superhero, right? And also, kind of a counterpoint to what you're saying, Christian, like um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but <laughs> <laughs> there's so much there's, there's so much here. But uh, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think with, uh, oh man, I totally lost it. I'll, I'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, like, let me, I guess, like, um, just start off by going to like a little, like, another segue of what you were kind of saying, Henry, is yeah. like, um, Shuri, you know, like, she just has, like, you know, she's a child with so much anger and like hate you know when they kill off angela bassett which was lazy writing i'm gonna st- straight up put mm-hmm. that into the podcast i felt like that was lazy writing um but from there i just feel like i kind of knew like if shuri's going to be the black panther because she wants to get revenge from her mother's death i feel like that's not a justification reason to um, a justified reason to become the Black Panther I mean like we already learned that mistake in Civil War when T'Challa became the Black Panther and was after um, what's his name Um, I'm blanking out his name in Civil War oh Uh, Baron Zemo yeah, Zemo, Zemo. I was gonna say Zeus, but no, Z- Zemo. Yeah, after Zemo kills his father, he kind of like mm-hmm. realizes, like, yeah, like, um, I'm not gonna let like revenge consume my heart, and so, yeah. um, I just feel like Shuri was just repeating that mistake in some war. She even has like that whole like dialogue with like Mabaku about like, I hate. Neymar, I want this world to burn and you're going to help me, you know? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. There's there's just like so much anger and hate in this child's heart that I feel like Nakia or even like T'Challa would have been like more evolved or mature to take up that role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good point. And I did remember my point from earlier. And it, it, we're kind of going down this crazy rabbit hole because essentially we're like talking about remaking this movie. And I'm telling you, I mean, <laughs> Ryan Coogler had an impossible task and what he ended up making, like props to him, like the movie does work. And like, as much as I'm saying, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. Like, I can't, I can't fucking make a movie. Like uh, props to him. Um, that all said, uh okay uh, number one we're talking about how uh you were talking about Perio, how like well maybe Nike wouldn't work so well as the black panther because uh she'd be kind of a reluctant black panther well i'm saying well that's what shuri was so they can make that work for nakia too <laughs> and then the other point was uh christian you're saying how um shuri has uh this emotional aspect to it where her brother has died that she has grief that is a real driving point for her character right well the same thing could be said for nakia right if you're saying um shuri has lost her beloved brother well guess what nakia has lost the love of her life and if there is not emotional weight to that you know i don't know what it, you know what it is um so that could work Right, right. That could definitely work. The death of T- T'Challa driving this grief within Nakia, and she becomes a new Black Panther. Right, that could work. And I mean, I mean, Peter right? Parker lost his uncle. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. thirdly, let, let me continue. Uh, Prefiro, you're saying, well, the death of the Queen led to the ult- the the finale. Right, Shuri wants revenge on Namor. Mm-hmm. Well, that was written into the script. Right when at, with Shuri as the lead, they could have they could have done something different. If Nakia was the Black Panther, uh, Kugler could have written a storyline where she wants revenge on Namor. You know, maybe not from the Queen dying, maybe some other plot point. Right, that's what I'm saying. Again, I'm going down this rabbit hole of like rewriting the entire movie, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying. I think it really could have worked. Um, and maybe we'll get to this now. Um, the death of uh, the Angela Bassett character, right? Uh, Queen Ramonda. So we're saying um, 
this was kind of the driving force behind uh, Shuri wanting payback on on Amor, right? Um, as I understand it, there are a lot of people who had issues with uh, the death of this character, right? How, how did you guys feel about the queen dying? That was a major point of this movie. <laughs> uh, Preferio, you want to start? Um, yeah, okay, like, I just really want to start off by saying, like, looking at the bigger picture, I just hated, like, what led up to it like how there was just like this whole like us versus them storyline like latinx folks versus um black folks the um the yet uh neymar's people against the citizens of wakanda like as soon as that happened i i kind of basically um what's the right word to say i guess like tuned out from the film Mm -hmm. like i was just like i'm not for this like i understand like in the comics there's like this neymar versus black panther um atlantis versus wakanda storyline which is again like the core um between these two great civilizations but then when you know ryan kudra changed up the background of Neymar and then it became like indigenous folks versus like black folks I was just like I yeah just kind of like tuned out and um I don't know just because I see it so much I guess in reality I'm just mm. like uh oh, like this is too this hits way too close to home and I was just like no no I'm not down for this um and so yeah leading up to like that whole storyline leading to the death of Angela Bassett the only thing I will say about this is I understand why they needed to do it but I'm not gonna I don't agree with it <laughs> mm-hmm. like here's here's me going off what you're saying Henry like us changing up the storyline and mm-hmm. everything but I understand why they need to do it to have that driving force for Shuri to recreate the heart and like um become the new black panther and have her revenge against neymar i understand all of that but i just felt like it was a cheap plot writing device Mm. to write off angela bassett like because you know like we've been saying like her performance is phenomenal and she just like has this major great presence throughout the film yeah and here she is like dying for like a cheap um motivation for Mm -hmm. shuri and i just felt that was just really unjust um i know i read an article that angela bassett was against the death also at first but then you know you know like i said like ran kudra explained to her like the the bigger picture and she was all right with it so I can't say much, but just being like, I didn't like it. <laughs> Got it. Uh, how about you, Christian? Your thoughts? Yeah. Um, I'm also someone who really didn't like this uh, kind of plot twist. I agree with everything Porfirio said. And I guess, I, like, I guess to add on to it, I guess one is that, like, like uh, a common complaint that I've seen a lot for this movie is that it's a little too slow. And then I think in in terms of pacing i think this really slows down the movie before getting into the second act because we have to go through the, a lot of the same funeral processions and grieving scenes that we saw at the beginning of the movie yeah once again kind of like when i think the plot should be ramping up like it it feels like it brings the plot to a halt structurally um and another thing is that like it, it kind of does put uh shuri's character arc in in kind of the same exact place that we saw t'challa's character arc in civil war Mm, he sees his dad die he goes on a vengeance quest but ultimately does not kill the bad guy Mm -hmm. um and so shuri is doing kind of the exact same thing you know and i like you know it's it's like poetry it rhymes but not in a good way you know (laughs) yeah I, I, I feel like, you know, it does feel lazy and it feels like a bit of a an easy way 
to ramp up the stakes when to be honest i think if she was just in a coma incapacitated the the same idea would have been um put across namor attacks uh wakanda you know you know he put the queen in danger the queen's in a hospital bed and sure he's still really angry about what happened but it, it doesn't slow down the plot and she would still take up the mantle of black panther because namor is just that powerful and that's the only way to defeat him i think the same point would have gotten across and it would have sped up the movie it would have, it would have cut like a good like 10 minutes out and i and you could still have that uh, you know that great scene with killmonger in the spiritual realm you know like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and like yeah i i really didn't like this part of the movie either yeah, solid points, both of you guys. I 100% agree with you guys. Um, not much to repeat, really. The only thing I would add is this. You know, we've been talking about seeing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I really got that sense. I mean, look at the history of this family, right? In Civil War, King T'Chaka is killed. And then we get to uh, the first Black Panther movie. In the... Uh, ritual combat scene between T'Challa and Killmonger. T'Challa is seemingly killed there. And, you know, the, Wakanda is already mourning the death of T'Challa back then. There's a scene with Ramonda and Shuri. They're like in tears and they like are, are, are completely heartbroken, right? So they've experienced the loss already. Oh, plot twist. T'Challa is not dead and there's still the heart shaped nerve and they save him. Uh, so he's, he's, he comes back, but wait <laughs> in Avengers infinity, infinity war, he for real dies. Thanos kills him with the snap. T'Challa is dead for five years. He's dead, right? Oh wait, but they brought him back to life. So he's back. Um, and then, uh, Sadly, Chadwick Boseman passes away in real life, so T'Challa is for real dead again at the beginning of this movie, Wakanda Forever. And then on top of all of that, they kill the queen. I mean, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, like it's just too much. It's just too much. Um, so yeah, just, just emphasizing, emphasizing the points you guys have already made. Uh, it, it was too much. I Like you were saying, Perfirio, I understand why they did it and i would add too that it was a surprise like i did not expect it kind of like um it felt a lot like uh the aunt may death mm -hmm. in uh in no way home right mm -hmm. definitely a surprise and, and shocking um but uh yeah this one had me thinking like man did they really have to do that <laughs> man uh and i think the consensus is uh we wished we wish it it hadn't happened <laughs> yeah you, you know like uh, uh you know like you asked me earlier like what i thought about like neymar and everything in this film and like i said yeah. like i am a full like supporter and follower of neymar going into this film i totally if neymar said like let's go ambush wakanda would have been like yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> but um but definitely like just you know like the the power and influence the first black panther film had i think that's the 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 influence i felt just seeing neymar on screen um but like when angela bessa died i was just kind of like oh my gosh do i really want to keep following neymar like i was like I'll definitely support it, but I was like, this is a questionable move, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, just from my movie experience, movie experience, because I watched this film in Oakland for the, in Thursday night, and I could just, you know, later on, there's that scene where, like, Wakanda, which is led by Shuri, like, um, confronting Neymar and his people, and some people were like happy you know some people were cheering and they just totally were convinced of seeing neymar as the villain 
And yeah. ag- again, like going back to the point that I made before, like I just, I didn't see Neymar as the villain. I see him as an anti-hero, but most of all, I just hated this whole like us versus them storyline. And so for black comic geek fans, like I understand where that angers from of seeing Neymar as the villain, especially after this death of Angela Bassett, who is like, you know, their queen, you know, of Wakanda, yeah. someone a, a very beloved character. And just her death very solidifies Neymar as the villain. So I understand where that anger is coming from, but again, like I I just didn't like this whole like us versus them storyline. So and because again, like s- since I was like a follower of Neymar, I just I couldn't fully see him as the villain as opposed to like um like a someone you know who loves Wakanda you know mm-hmm. now a little devil's advocate for you Perfurio now I, I understand where you're coming from where there's a lot of this us versus them they set up the movie of uh, with having Wakanda and Talakan being very similar, a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are at odds. And, you know, middle of the movie, end of the movie, they are at war, really, right? And I understand there's there's some discomfort there on your end, I, and I, I understand that. But I kind of feel like that was purposeful, right? You, you, you oh, mentioned yeah. it, you, you mentioned it yourself. You, you see this in real life. So I feel like that's what Kugler was kind of going for. Like he's sort of reflecting real life. But then at the very end, there's that redemptive moment, right? Where mm-hmm. Shuri could have killed, could have killed Namor, but she chooses not to because she chooses peace over violence, right? Don't you feel like there was sort of a, I don't know, a cathartic moment there where it's like, wait a minute. Um, it's not us versus them anymore. We're all in this together kind of thing. Didn't you feel that? Yeah, 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 definitely. Especially adding that whole, um, you know, there's that one storyline that which we haven't even talked about yet, but when like Val is introduced and everything, mm-hmm. I honestly felt like there was like, this going to be like the two civilizations coming together because mm-hmm. they realized like, there's like this like, more like stuff that they have similar Mm -hmm. than differences you know and i thought that was the storyline that they were going to go with of like val or or the u.s at least trying to like attempt to get vibranium from the Ah. from underwater and then the two just kind of like work together they'd be like no fuck you colonizers don't touch this this Mm -hmm. natural resources you know like who are you to own this you know Okay. But I feel like that's, you know, like, you know, the, I think we'll talk about this later, but that whole, like, um, conversation Neymar had with his, um, with the other, uh, what's her name? I'm totally blanking on her name. Um, Namora? Namora, yeah. Mm-hmm. About, like, oh, they're going to need us later on. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, like what you said, like, I guess there is, like, this, uh, resolve feeling mm-hmm. between the two got it so you enjoyed that but maybe you would have liked to see a little more of that perhaps? yeah okay for sure definitely for sure <laughs> okay got it got it okay so let's continue on um any other shortcomings we want to call out here mm-hmm. um i definitely had some more but uh, yeah it sounds like you might have some christian yeah well before you already kind of touched on this so um i guess let's let's talk about it uh what was the the part with Val and Ross, mm-hmm. like all the CIA agents, you know, or, or CIA Val with you know Madam Hydra, whatever? Um, <laughs> yeah. Because that part really does go nowhere. Yeah, like it feels yeah. like a different movie, and like it, none of them really interact with like the characters outside of like. Everett Ross's like first appearance in the movie and like the after credit scene, you know, it, it feels like the whole thing could have been just completely cut out of the movie and no one would have, you know, it wouldn't have changed anything. 
because they're just kind of talking about things that we just saw happen, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like it feels like you're, they're just like reacting to the events that we've already just seen. And like, if, you know, it's trying to set up, I guess the Thunderbolts, but it feels like there's like a big scene missing, you know, like, and I think like, it's like, you know, it's not really who you want to come see. There's such a strong core dynamic with the family. Yeah. And this is so far removed. Like, it's not like I was really like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Everett Ross, my favorite character from the first Black Panther <laughs> movie. Yeah, I, I really want to see more of him. That's that's why I buy a ticket to Black Panther. <laughs> and, like, you know, I thought he was fine in the, the cameo to point him in the right direction. But I feel like that should have been it, you know? Like, it feels so tacked on. And it's mm. so boring <laughs> i don't care that they were married i don't care about these characters yeah that's a good one i think he summed it up really well um the uh the everett ross character i mean he he basically had one purpose in the movie and that was to get okoye and shuri to riri williams right he, he he basically helped them find her right that could have been a cameo right that could have been one scene hey there's the guy from the last black panther movie he does that one thing that's it like that would have been good and then with the val stuff i think val could have been like a second post credit scene you know like she had nothing to do with the plot of this movie at all like ross was barely part of it okay he he kind of helped move the plot along to get them to Riri. Okay, done. Could have been a cameo. Val, nothing, right? She added nothing to this movie. And uh, yeah, she could have been, she probably would have been better off as like a second post credit scene and like a teaser for Thunderbolts, right? Like in the background, like Ross is there. He's like, oh, here's my ex-wife. I was like, whoa, it's Val. And then she talks about, oh, I'd love to get my hands on some vibranium and then end scene and like, you know, teasing Thunderbolts. Like, That'd been cool, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, they definitely did not warrant the screen time that they ended up having, right? So it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a, the pitfalls of a shared universe, right? Um, the fans love this kind of stuff, typically, where uh, there's some interconnectedness. Um, but yeah, the, the Ross and Val stuff was like, it just fell flat. It didn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay um yeah maybe just spitballing a bit um yeah we've talked about uh the ending of the movie a bit shuri versus namor um first off uh the action of this movie yeah let's talk about the action a little bit um i thought the action was i don't know a little lackluster i wasn't really blown away um i did i did enjoy the scene in massachusetts um, when it's Okoye, Riri, and Shuri um, first escaping the FBI and then doing battle with the people of Talakan. I thought that was cool. An exciting chase scene and then an exciting battle scene. But um, like many MCU movies, the middle action scene is far superior to like the final battle, right? I thought the final battle was kind of weak. And... Um, yeah, and, and just kind of specifically when Shuri takes on Namor, there's a big logic error moment in this scene. I think I brought, up, brought it up to you guys. But uh, the Wakandans' plan is going like right on schedule. They have Namor trapped inside their ship. He's all um, dehydrated, right? So his powers are dampened and everything is like, going according to plan um but then the ship goes down and they crash land on a beach right <laughs> so it's on the beach where shuri and namor do have their final battle and i don't know why it was decided to do this but um uh on the beach, it's like Shuri's point of view where she's dazed, like the ship has just crashed. It's just, she's dazed, it's kind of just not sure where she is exactly. And then from out of nowhere, Namor attacks her, right? Um, but it's it's still the dehydrated Namor, right? And 
in my mind, it's a no brainer that Namor should have gone to the water first and then attacked Shuri, right? <laughs> because I mean, we saw how powerful he was earlier in the movie when he's all wet and jumping out of the water. He's like unstoppable. So all he needed to do is go a few steps. Like he's on the fucking beach, man. Like go to the water, splash some water in her face and let's go. <laughs> That's all you got to do. But, you know, he chooses to like attack Shuri right away. So like if they crash land and they're like just like in in the throes of like mortal combat and they had to fight fight or die that would have been a better way to go like namor has no choice but to fight he can't go to the water he has to fight right now but they set up the scene such that it's sure like in a daze in a fog namor could have easily gone to the water so huge plot hole <laughs> like that that almost like took me out of the movie entirely i'm like dude that's uh they, they dropped the ball in this one <laughs> sorry but uh that, that's 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 a that's a problem that's a mistake yeah i, th- I think the the part that like i didn't really care for in the final battle i I thought that like the big boat set piece mm, like battle yeah. scene uh i was not really a big fan of you know i, I think one the the big one is that like uh, the midnight angel min- uh, oh, uh-huh. outfit midnight, i think that's what it was angel. called midnight angel yeah yeah I, I thought that looked really terrible oh my god like even akoya says like that looks so ugly and it's like yeah that looks terrible <laughs> that looks so ugly yes agreed. oh man like and like i didn't like yeah i didn't like all the iron man suits like eh, even Riri williams outfit uh, or like iron heart suit i was not a big fan of at the end, like, uh, like I think, like Marvel inserting battle scenes for some reason they're just not as good at that lately. They really like to do yeah. that, but it tends to like it's like in Chong Chi, where it's like it's not you're kind of more into the one on one, you know, and that's yeah. kind of what you want to see. But then they kind of go back to that, and you're like, eh, whatever. Like, cause like even though like yeah, you're totally right. I think one thing I did enjoy about like the the final battle, I was like, wow, this is like, r- this feels way more brutal. The fight between Shuri and Namor was like, like Shuri actually gets like stabbed. That's oh, like, yeah. oh, that looks, that yeah. I felt that. That's painful. Yeah. And then the Namor gets like torched, you know, like it's like, ooh, damn, that's yeah. Oh, ah. Yeah, and then and, he gets uh, one of his wings cut off his yeah. ankle. That was pretty brutal too and I, and I like that brutality but then it you know like <laughs> but then it kind of goes to your typical marvel fair on the boat and i was just yeah that's the part i really checked out of i didn't really care for that yeah uh real quick the the midnight angel suit yeah i agree terrible <laughs> oh my god the thing is just ugly as hell and um and you're right you know like we've seen iron man enough in the MCU. And you know, I love Riri Williams, so I'm not gonna take her out of the movie. Uh, but you, if you're if you're already having one Iron Man suit in the movie, like that's enough. <laughs> Especially, you know, we don't want to have two more that look really ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. That that was pretty, pretty painful. Like Okoye is such a cool character, and then all of a sudden you just oh just give her an Iron Man suit. <laughs> like what <laughs> oh boy uh prefer your thoughts on the end of the movie yeah Anything i really call out like as much as like you know i i'm glad the two civilizations like made up and um like put their differences aside it just happened way too fast is what i think you know mm, like sure ah, like good point i think we've said this so many times in the podcast like that like the endings, like the final battle endings, always feel like messy, you know. Like I think that was addressed in the She Hulk final episode, and um, this unfortunately follows that same pattern, you know. Like Neymar and Shuri fight it out, and then right as like Shuri's about to like take out Neymar, like she has like this like epiphany and sees her mother. 
and her mother's just like, oh, remember who you are, you know? She totally has, like, a Mufasa moment from, like, The Lion King and sees her, yeah, like, ancestor. And it's just, it was just, like, you know, like, the two saw their mothers and all of a sudden, like, they're like, you know what? Like, we're fighting over nothing. Let's just um, not fight. You know, like, it makes no sense to fight. <laughs> and then I think the thing I'd laugh at the most was, like, you know, they go, they fly back to the boat where all the fights are happening. And then where they fucking Neymar and Shuri just standing side by side. They're like, yeah, so we made up and no more fighting. The fighting stops and everybody's like, okay. <laughs> like, after so many people lost their lives and died you know and got injured everyone's like okay with it you know yeah and it's just like okay so then why were you guys fighting then in the first place sure you were upset that you were angry that he killed your mom and Neymar you were angry that he killed like a citizen you know like like so so many other people died because of it and here you guys are like being like we're BFFs now it's just I just felt like that whole like resolution just happened way too fast. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I just was not here for it. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. It did kind of turn around pretty quickly Yeah. at the end there. Uh, you had something to add, Christian? No, it's just like, no, it's like, I, I see what you mean. It's like for a movie that like felt really, really slow at the beginning, the ending does feel like, really weirdly rushed <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah and actually some of this stuff brings up some thoughts on my end too like um oh, we brought this up before like shuri had never really done fighting before this movie right and all of a sudden she's like a pretty uh proficient fighter where'd that come from you know uh it's like you know, she got trained by black widow or something yeah like you know the heart-shaped herb gives you enhanced abilities and and the black panther suit you know gives you abilities too but you know just in terms of like hand-to-hand -hand combat you know there's 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 like a baseline you should have and it, it seemed like she had it like she she was able to hold her own in a hand-to-hand -hand fight um but where did that come from like we we there was not a single like training scene or a training montage nothing like that right so that that all kind of came out of nowhere um and yeah like at the end on, on top of the boat um so right before uh namor and shuri come back and Namor is saying like, oh yeah, let's, 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 let's go home. Right. Let's, it's, it's over. Um, right before that happens, the Wakandans are like in trouble, right? They're surrounded mm -hmm. by the people of Talakan, and it seems like they're, they're about to be slaughtered. Right. <laughs> when that was happening, I noticed that Riri Okoye and the other woman in um, a midnight angel suit, are in there right and i'm thinking well you can fly <laughs> like you, you're not trapped <laughs> you could just fly off the <laughs> boat but they're like they're seemingly like oh no what do i do i'm surrounded right so that didn't make any sense <laughs> and maybe they wanted to stay together in solidarity i don't know but they didn't need to stay there you have these suits you can fly so yeah uh, when it comes down to it i think there are a number of plot holes in this one um like i've been saying though you know it, uh, ryan kugler did have an impossible task with this movie so it's hard to nitpick too much uh but there there were definitely uh some issues um logically <laughs> i will say <laughs> okay uh so what else any just random thoughts doesn't have to be positives or negatives um here's something that come up that came up um i know we've all seen this movie 
uh, more than once, multiple viewings. Uh, Prefer Young Christian, you guys saw it twice each, yeah? Um, I've seen it three times, actually. Um, I will say this as something of a positive, I would say. It seemed like each time I saw it, I got a little more out of it. I, I thought it, it was a little better upon successive viewings. Um, so I will say that. But yeah, what did you guys think? Like any uh, new re re revelations on that second viewing? Any new insights? Hmm. Yeah, like, I don't know. Um, as far as like better or worse, I think uh, there were some parts I definitely appreciated a lot more. I think on the second viewing more of like um, kind of just stuff. I, I guess thematically picked up on, you know, um, I think with Namor and I think Talo Khan. And I, I think I was a lot like, I just, I really did like, I think love the scenery a lot more the second time I was able to just kind of, kind of like, I think really, really soak that in as well and i think another thing that i i think i picked up a lot, a lot more uh, on the second time um because I, I i guess i didn't really know how to I guess, process this but we did talk about it a little bit at the end um it's kind of they keep it at the very end of the movie of course um after shuri burns her robes you you see Nakia come out with the uh, the little T'Challa, the son. I guess that's probably why she was largely absent for a lot of the movie. Um, yeah. But you could you could really see like oh this could be the next Black Panther. I could I could imagine him being you know few years go by the actor grows up, mm -hmm. and he is now T'Challa. But maybe as a much younger younger version who learns the ropes, and we kind of like uh, I was also thinking about it as you mentioned how like oh well you know we haven't seen Shuri train too much we haven't seen how she became the Black Panther, and mm. I think that could be a nice way to kind of show how she trained. Maybe she did get training mm. as like a young child, mm -hmm. and maybe she, there's like a lot of royalty with that that she can kind of bestow on that. And I think that's, that'd be that could be a good way to. In a way, she would be the one to pass the torch back, you know, as like part of the future. But that could be like a ways down the line, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, it's just something I think I appreciate a lot more. I think the second time, a kind mm -hmm. of nice after credit twist. Yeah. Cool. You okay. know, like I, I, I really kind of wonder if like they had always planned to um have like T'Challa's child be introduced in the MCU, you know, cuz like what the kids at least like he looked like 6 or 7 years old. And so I feel like yeah. that that really kind of also answers the question like where was Nikia during like Infinity War and Endgame? Yeah. You know, yep. like she even says, I think she tells Shuri that she um, took him away from Wakanda to escape, you know, like that whole pressure of fulfilling royal duties and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that whole timeline of Infinity War and Endgame seems to be about the same time that of how old the, the boy is you know right right and because yeah like at least it has to be what from if from the snap it was a five year right five years or four years five, five years. years yep five years so at least from infinity war and endgame it's five years but from like black panther one to black panther two like it seems to be in that like time frame of like yeah like five to seven years you know like mm -hmm. And so it just makes sense. <clears throat> like, yeah, whether or not they had this, it, ha, uh, of the two having a kid, 
and Akia's absence, like that was probably, I feel like, always at the back of the mind. And, and then they just kind of like, yeah, um, the best way they could honor Chadwick and fans by giving a new Black Panther is by naming him T'Challa, you know, T'Challa Jr. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that post credit scene so much. It's so awesome. They made the decision to have just one post credit scene. You know, typically it's two, but they just had the one and it is a good one. Oh, man, it, it to me, man, it's it's one of the best that the, M- the MCU has had. It's so great. And um, yeah, the fact that Nakia named her child T'Challa is just everything. <laughs> it's just like, whoa, because then it does open the door to T'Challa, the Black Panther uh, in the future, right? So we, we, we might get that. Um, and yeah, I like what you mentioned too, Perfurio, about um, Nakia's absence. You know, in Endgame, there's that shot of all the female superheroes coming together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nakia is not in there, right? It's kind of a glaring omission, right? Um, now we know why she wasn't there. So it's kind of a cool little like uh, explanation. Um, so yeah, everything about the Nakia character is great. And yeah, that that post credit scene is so cool um whatever happens to it like whether or not the son of t'challa t'challa jr whatever you want to call him if he becomes a black panther or he doesn't um just that moment was really awesome um it kind of was like the exclamation point on um shuri's arc like she finally was able to kind of process her brother's death and then Find now peace. what's that like find peace yeah she found peace and after all this loss like like i've been saying she lost her father she lost her brother she lost her mother but here's like a family me- member she has she never knew she had right and it's really special and like i was saying maybe it could be the new black panther and it could still be T'Challa, the Black Panther, right? So yeah, just yeah. awesome, awesome. I I love how at the end, like you know, again we have that little like when Shuri's like you know processing the grief and everything. I love how um, Marvel gives that little like again like Chadwick um, tribute at mm. the end. Like yeah. it's like mm. it's like complete silence. You know, no music, mm-hmm. no um no nothing it's just like flashbacks to like chatwick as this you know like the great actor that he was playing t'challa and black panther and i just I, I don't know it was just very like powerful and a moment of grief a moment of reflection and um I mean, like, even though it was a, a shot in silence, you could just hear, like, the emotions in the theater, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's just, like, taking it in, and I thought that was really powerful. Yeah, that's a good point. It's it's good to see this movie in the theaters because it, you get that shared experience, and, yeah, you really feel it. You feel the emotions that people are, are having and I definitely felt it all throughout the movie, you know, from the very beginning with the Marvel logos with all Chadwick, you know, mm-hmm. Chadwick Boseman images appearing to the end, this sort of silent uh, montage of uh, Chadwick Boseman in um, I'm sure he's memories. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I came close to tears a number of times with this one. Very touching. Um, hey, you know who we haven't talked about at all is M'Baku. Um, M'Baku reprised his role here. Um, and, he, you know, to be honest, he wasn't in the movie a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I love M'Baku and uh, yeah, maybe could have used a little more of him. But um, 
uh, what he when he is in the movie, I think he's quite good. I, what I wanted to call out is that it seemed like he had a lot of good ideas all throughout the movie. Like at first, um, when the Wakandans are trying to figure out uh, what to do with Namor, um, he had a very aggressive approach. He's like, we just got to, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> Let's just kill him. <laughs> right. If you're like, whoa, 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 you know, you know, you're, you're, you're like, you're savage mountain dude, right? Like we're, we're um, civilized. Let's, you know, we, we have to handle this diplomatically. Right. Mm -hmm. but, and um, it seemed like, I mean, you know, maybe it's not the best idea just to kill a guy, but I, I understand his way of thinking, like, let's just get rid of this problem <laughs> right now. And then later in the movie, when the Wakandans are actually on board with like taking out Namor, he, he's, he's thinking pretty strategically. He's like, oh, well, if we if we kill Namor now, like we're going to start a war like that's maybe that's not the best idea. So, again, like he's kind of got this like outside of the box thinking. And then at the very end, he has another great idea. He, he wants to, to fight for the throne. I think it's a great idea because uh, for the ritual combat, uh, the Black Panther has to release their powers right they have to mm -hmm. release the heart-shaped herb and there's no way mbaku's losing a fight with shuri without any powers right so of course you would win so that's like a great a great time to to go for the throne so i just think he had a lot of a lot of great ideas i, I think they're setting up mbaku for some some big things ahead because just it seems like uh, they they were they were uh showcasing his uh his um his leadership skills in this one so uh yeah Look, watch out i think there's a lot more from this character to come yeah i i wish we got more of him like he was great in the scenes he was in but yeah i think you're right i think uh we'll see a lot more of him i guess he might be the king of wakanda now yeah like it seems like he's kind of kind of shaken off that like kind of more antagonistic rival aspect that he kind of had in the first movie and now he's like an advisor of Shuri's you know and seems mm -hmm. to be a very close ally to them yeah so I wouldn't be surprised if like there was like behind the scenes like why don't you take the throne I, I just want to do my own thing my mom's dead you know Nakia doesn't really want it I don't really want it it's all yours mm -hmm. we've already kind of gone to you twice for help so yeah yeah if the, you you deserve it so i think that could make a great dynamic for the third movie mm -hmm. definitely good segue i was thinking before we get to our ratings we can talk about what's next what's next for the black panther franchise and also wakanda forever marks the end of phase four so just what's next in general for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Any thoughts on what do you think lies ahead? I feel like we're not going to see these characters show up, like Neymar, Black Panther, Shuri. I feel like we're not going to honestly see them until um, uh, Secret Wars. That's, mm. we, that's the first Avengers one, right? Or mm, That's the second. Yeah. Or second, no, King yeah, Dynasty. King Dynasty is the first. Then, okay, movie. then King King Dynasty. I feel like we're not going to see them until then. Mm. Or, or maybe who knows? Maybe we'll see them sooner. Like maybe in Thunderbolts, you know, because Val was yeah. briefly introduced in there, and you know, both you know, Neymar even said to Namora that like Wakanda's going to need them eventually. What kind is going to turn the turn to them for help? So my bet is either Thunderbolts or King Dynasties. We're going to see these characters again. That's a good call. Yeah, it does seem like the Val stuff in this movie is leading into Thunderbolts, and she seems kind of obsessed with vibranium. So. Uh, vibranium might play a factor in thunderbolts so we could definitely see some characters in this movie in in that one. Oh yeah uh christian any thoughts yeah like um because in falcon and the Winter soldier they had the uh, the door melange 
yes. you know, um, as kind of their own force doing their own thing, you know, doing their own thing. So I, I wonder if we'll see, I think I, I could imagine if they came back, if characters from Black Panther and Wakanda came back, I could definitely see something similar where you just might see um, a squad of like the Dora Milaje um, for like a fight scene, probably uh, in Thunderbolts or um, uh, I'm trying to think of another Disney plus show. They might be, you know, um, I guess, I guess since they were so involved with Riri Williams kind of origin story, I could imagine, you know, sure. You might make a cameo somewhere there, although that could be, you know, that could also not happen at all. And they could be completely absent, you know, but, you know, I might be also a bit prefer that it, it might be until Avengers that, uh, you know, or I guess Black Panther, the exception of Black Panther 3, whenever that comes out, mm -hmm. is where, where we might see them again. You know, going off yeah. what you just said, Christian, I didn't think about it until now when you brought up that, like, yeah, that there was um, the door... The Dora, I think it's Dora Milaje, Milaje mm -hmm. and Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, but you know, Bucky is also in Thunderbolts. Aha, uh -huh. ah, he's got so, all kind of connections. Exactly. Yeah, like maybe he like goes rogue or something and decides to help the team steal vibranium. Right, and if I'm not mistaken, the Dora Milaje. They take Zemo in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? So theoretically, Zemo is imprisoned in Wakanda, or is, or, or is he on the raft? He's on one of those two, right? I, th I thought he was on the raft. Yeah, I think if you're I, right. I think they tried taking him, but Bucky was like, no. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, so he's on the raft. But regardless, it seems like the continuation of the Falcon and Winter Soldier in uh, the new Captain America movie, New World Order, could easily include the Dora Milaje or even other uh, characters from Wakanda. And then, like you're saying, Christian, the Ironheart series, probably. I, I, I'm almost banking on like um, someone from Wakanda showing up in that show also. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, but what about uh, the end of phase four? Like, what do, we, what do we think about phase four? We don't have to go like super in depth, but what do we think about phase four? What do you, what do we think about what lies ahead, phase five? Dude, okay, like, I, I don't, obviously, I feel like phase four was the start of the multiverse, you know, like mm -hmm. introduction and going into that. But I think I was having this conversation with you guys, but. I feel like phase four was just a um a time for like grieving you know you have so that's just a really really i feel like common theme throughout the projects you know you had wanda um grieving over the loss of vision you had peter parker grieving over the loss of his aunt may and his friends basically you yeah. know um you had, yeah, like Shuri grieving over the loss of her brother. Um, I feel like there's like one other big one I'm missing. But um, I just feel like, especially like after, or um, Yelena grieving over the loss of her sister, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like phase four was just kind of like getting back into reality from like the blip, you know? And I feel like, don't quote me on this, but I feel like Kevin Feige, especially because Phase 4 was just, like, coming out, out of, like, um, or, like, it happened during, like, the pandemic, was just, like, a time for us to just kind of, like, grieve all together <laughs> with COVID and everything. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, basically just the grief and getting back into, into it from like the effects of the blip in Endgame. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a good take. Any thoughts on phase four, Christian? There we go. 
um having some mic issues but that's actually a good theme that um you brought up poor fear that i actually never thought about with phase four no like there's a lot of death and grieving over characters um and character deaths like i guess if this is the this is a very different end to a phase you know uh black panther wakanda forever because there's no real big avengers movie to really kind of cap it off you know yeah yeah and i but i, I will say like i do know that uh you know the movies tend, had to get shuffled around a bit because of the pandemic you know pandemic and if you know the untimely death of chadwick boseman as well as some, you know some other things and i think the way these movies are made and scheduled um with you know another one was doctor strange supposed was supposed to be before spider-man yada 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 and so um like i think like uh i guess like to keep it i guess brief on phase four my thoughts kind of like kind of similar to how i feel like i guess about this movie where i think you see when you when it kind of gets to those spots of grieving or some of the like the more emotional scenes it's like you, you can have, really have some of the best marvel has to offer but um i think there is a general problem of bloat you know like sometimes mm -hmm. the shared universe can feel a bit too much like baggage like what we've seen with val and ross but at the same time it can also set up some very great opportunities with namor and like we're really excited about him he was a really like great new take on the character and we're really excited to see where he he's going and i think they're like so sometimes movies can these movies can feel a bit more like uneven in a way because because you have such great moments and like some parts where you just really feel like you're tuning out you know yeah and so this movie, it's, it does, in a way, it feels like a, a fitting end to Phase 4 mm. in that regard. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I like that idea. This movie being a bit of a microcosm of the MCU Phase 4. Because, uh, yeah, it's a long movie. Like we mentioned, two hours, 41 minutes. And... Um, like you mentioned, Christian, it's a bit bloated. <laughs> and uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4 was pretty bloated, too. <laughs> Let me run down the list real quick. Uh, there were a bunch of movies and a bunch of shows. The movies were Black <laughs> Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange 2, Thor 4, Black Panther 2, and then uh, TV shows, WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, What If?, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, and She-Hulk. So <laughs> there was a lot of content in this phase. Um, and yeah, like that whole microcosm thing, definitely agree. Like there were a lot of great highlights. Uh, there were certainly low lights as well. And um, ultimately we got a lot of content. Uh, so yeah, I think I think uh, in a similar vein, you could, we could describe this movie in that way um there were highs there were lows ultimately um maybe a little longer than it needed to be perhaps um but let's get into that how good was it let's rate black panther wakanda forever uh how about you preferio you want to start with your rating <laughs> oh my gosh um this is so hard because as much as I, you know, <laughs> as much as I feel like we bagged this movie in and out on this podcast episode, it was, like you said, Henry, so many times, like, this was an impossible task for anybody to have done, you know, to write, write it well and write it to honor chadwick and write it to just kind of make sense you know yeah yeah 
Um, so yes, obviously I had my my uh, dis disappointment with some aspects, like with Neymar and Angela Bassett and everything. Um, was it better than the first one? I don't think so. I would still, 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 though, highly recommend watching this beautiful film. And so because of that, I think I would give this movie a four out of five. Excellent. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, how about you, Christian? How would you rate this one? Um, I think Prefer, he does make a really good point where like this movie was an impossible task. It's It's really not... I imagine the movie Ryan Coogler wanted to make initially, you know, and I, and I think in a better world, we would have gotten that, uh, Black Panther two with Chadwick. Mm -hmm. But I think with what has happened here, he's done a great job. I do highly recommend this movie. I do think, uh, the highs are very high. Um, but yeah, I am a little more mixed on this movie than I think I want to be. If I, if I kind of see it as it's, with taking that aside and seeing it as it's out on its own highs are high but there was a lot of parts that did really make me scratch my head and some of the parts it was like ah, i'm really not liking i'm really not liking this and they'll go to wow that was amazing so i think I, i'm a little more mixed on this film i, I think I'll, I'll give it a three but still with a very high like recommend it ryan Ku like I feel like he still hasn't made a bad movie, you know. And I think this is this is a great one to add to his repertoire. Mm -hmm. Right on. Hey, that's a good point. Yeah, Ryan Coogler's putting together quite a filmography here. Um, I'm I'm with you guys. I do recommend this movie. Um, it's not without its shortcomings. Um, I'm gonna go with a three out of five. Um, yeah, the first time I saw this movie, I was definitely disappointed. I had problems with it. And um, yeah, till my dying day, I will say that uh, Nakia should have been the new Black Panther. <laughs> I'll say this too. I think this story would have worked better as a TV series. I'm going to say that in all honesty honesty um you know I, I was thinking about man this movie is really long but then you think about like what what do you cut out it's hard to cut out stuff maybe you take out a little bit here and there what do you cut out well maybe you don't cut it out instead you spread it out over you know six episodes um it and, and that kind of solves a problem i had with shuri um she's not a movie star uh, but she could be a TV star, right? Um, so yeah, I think I think it as a movie, it would have worked better with Nakia being the Black Panther. And um, if not that, then um, it could have worked better as a TV series. But then all that aside, like I was saying earlier, I'm not a filmmaker. Like talk is cheap, right? And um, to actually execute this, We've been saying this over and over, but you know, Kugler had an impossible mission here. He did the best he could. Everyone involved did the best they could. They, they brought their A game, man. The 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 cast, the crew, um, they brought it. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, on the subsequent viewings, I I started to to let go of like, oh, all the what ifs. What could have been? Like, oh, what if they recast? Like, what if they? cast a different black panther what if they made a tv show and just leave that alone just like this is this is what it is this is the movie they made you know just just go with it and when i started to go with it um it it, it, it i feel though flawed it does work and uh, i do give it a recommendation three out of four uh, sorry three out of five uh and with that Talking about bloated, bloated. We we've <laughs> we've gone over time ourselves here. Uh, we can wrap up the episode. This is farewell from Henry, Christian, and Porfirio.